I'm Lynn Heidebaugh, curator at the Smithsonian's National Postal Museum. Hello, I'm Bob Vanderlinden. I'm curator of air transportation and special purpose aircraft at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. One of the airplanes we have on exhibit at the National Postal Museum is the Wiseman Cook airplane. It is often considered the first uh, aircraft to carry airmail, which in fact it did do in uh, California. And Fred Wiseman flew it from Petaluma, California to Santa Rosa. It took him two days to go 18 miles because of mechanical issues. The point wasn't for it to be a huge success, it was to show that it could be done. And just to prove that this new technology of flight uh, had a whole host of uh, possibilities, and one of which was the carrying of mail and cargo, as well as passengers. Over the years, they were making the case that they could use airlines to transport the mail regularly. And by 1918, they were given congressional funds to be able to set up the airmail service, which launched in May of 1918 with a flight from Washington, D.C. and New York City. By 1919, 1920, the post office set up a system of routes across the country. You were able to buy airmail stamps because you had to pay extra for this. Put them on an airplane and have your letters delivered across the country. They even pioneered airmail flight at night by setting up airmail beacons that would light the way. With all of these sort of innovations going on, they were needing to expand their services and they turned to contractors. And these contractors were the precursors of uh, today's airlines. What was important was that the airmail contracts provided the airmail carriers a source of steady income, uh, which they did not have before. There were airlines before 1926, but then none of them survived because they couldn't make money just carrying passengers. When the government subsidized the airmail system and subsidized these airmail carriers, they were able to survive. And then later, the federal government encouraged them through uh, different legislation to build bigger aircraft that could carry passengers and cargo to offset the costs. And from that point onwards, the air transportation system was established in the United States. The post office department using contractors to transport the mail was not unique to the commercial aviation industry. Actually, the post office department had used many types of transportation contracts over the years. The post office has traditionally been the tool through which the government has helped to promote communications across the country. Uh, first by building post roads, uh, subsidizing river boats, other ships, uh, railroads, all of that. And the post office department used all these different modes of transportation so that they could reach very different parts of the continental U.S. and its territories. The Postal Service still uses airmail today. It's just not called airmail and there's not a separate postage rate for it, but there is a great volume of mail that does move by air. I don't think anyone's going to be folding themselves into an envelope like Flat Stanley. But how do you think commercial mail has changed the way that you travel? Let us know down in the comments section. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the National Air and Space Museum's YouTube channel and follow STEM and 30 on Facebook and Twitter.